It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Jets and the Browns coming up next. We are in the so-called rock and roll capital of the world, Cleveland, Ohio, and First Energy Stadium on the shores of Lake Erie. This was the scene a few minutes ago, the dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. They're ready to go as they get set to match up with the New York Jets. Fred had gone alongside Charles Davis. And CD, you look at the Jets coming into play. Their offense is a unit that's not afraid to take chances out there and not always for the better. What do you see them trying to do here? I think they'll continue to take those chances, Brandon. But to me, they have to do it in a measured way. And what I mean by that, they can't just come into a game and throw caution to the wind and just say, we're going to run a bunch of gadget plays, a lot of reverses, end of rounds, all of those things. They've got to identify the spots where they want those plays to pay off, which means you have to set them up, and then when they present themselves, take full advantage. set to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon and off we go from Cleveland this take it in at the goal line and good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20 so here come the Browns for their first drive on offense and leading them out there their 6-5 quarterback and what I'm looking for from him today the things every quarterback is looking to do lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing it, running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. They'll run for the first time here with Brown. Brown with a stick skills, and he works free. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That is a running back who is not about to go down easily. He fought his way through the contact until the seas opened up for him. Yeah, and this could be a sign of what this defense is in for because you know all week long the coaches were preaching to the defense. You've got to be able to wrap up against a back like him or he can make you pay. Technique, technique, technique. And the next-gen stat shows us the tale of how much yardage he was able to pick up after the initial contact. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. They go right back to the ground here in Brown. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Now a man open down the middle of the field. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. They'll set up to throw. That's complete as he goes right back to Crowder. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. But that's not going to get him a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and 
I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. We, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive a lot. Third down conversion here is big. They'll run on first down. It's Brown, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. They'll look to throw here. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. A great effort there. 42 yards. And the Browns have taken the early lead. And that's another route that defenders would vote to take out of the game. The real round? Oh, without a doubt. You're just trying to move everybody in one direction. And whether it's a running back or another receiver, as they sit out behind the sideline, you've got a problem on your hands. Uh, the defenders hate it there. It happened, and it resulted in a touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. So the drive there took six plays. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. a return from just beyond the goal line. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a Let's knee go. as he Let's only go. gets Let's this go. out to the 16-yard line. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. And they will be led out by their 6-4 quarterback. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, He's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, we're talking about ordering dinner, ordering snacks. I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. On second down now, McNeil, he's got a first down past the 30, and he's all the way up to the 39-yard line that time. Come on, now. Good, Let's strong, go. explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Off the play fake, O'Brien. And this is incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. to throw again. O'Brien going deep for Walker. 
And this is caught. Touchdown, Jets. A great play there. 61 yards. And the Jets are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, he's been doing this for a lot of years with the arm strength still there, and he showed it off on that one. And we knew that this offense was going to try and put pressure on the secondary. That was something they talked about with us. They knew that they had an advantage, pressed it, and there you go. Big play for a touchdown on their very first possession. Point after try forthcoming. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. A drive there of just four plays, and it's finished off by a New York Jets touchdown. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. It is fielded right at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. They defer to Brown to start the drive. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 42 yards rushing for a lot. He's only carried the ball four times. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurdling through them. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now a carry for Brown. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. He'll look to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but 7-7, seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get advantage that way. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Here's a give to Brown. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Here's a second and seven. Got an open man. That's David the Joker, the tight end. That catch good for five. It's third down. 
Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. He'll look to throw. Quick slant to Crowder. And he is going to have the Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I like the call on third and two. They were geared up to stop the run. I like the fact they just hit him quick. A little slant route. All about timing there, partner. Yeah, the timing, everything well executed. First down, it's Brown, and that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. It, He'll man. lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. These two teams all tied after one. On to the second from Cleveland. It's the Browns in control of the football as they've got it second down and 11. Now back to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. <laughs> On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Complete to Newsom. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. Well, he gets attended to, we'll step aside. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. They're going to look to throw. And that'll be incomplete. A great job defensively taking away his receivers. And he was forced to put that one into Lake Erie, but that's what good quarterbacks do. They don't take unnecessary chances if they don't have to. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Now a give left side, Brown with it. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself as we just saw there. So now the Browns will turn it over to their field goal unit here. And this one is right through. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So a good kick there, and they put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. 
be able to knock the ball through the post and take the throw. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Not Either the, way. Not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taken in at the three. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They'll run on first down. McNeil. And he rolls across the 20 to the 24-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Second down and three. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain that time, as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Just shy of the 45 yard line. Let's go, boys. Bring it up. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. First down, O'Brien. And a throw right sideline is complete. And he almost made it, but just short. Finally out of bounds, right down around the goal line. Big yardage that time for the Jets. Now we know this offense has the potential to strike quickly, and they just bit off two huge plays on back-to-back -back snaps. So on the other side of the ball, you've got to go Band of Brothers thought process. No one left behind. No pointing fingers, no accusations, because if you don't, those quick strikes we just saw, they become long-lasting. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. They run the counter. McNeil fighting his way in for a Jets touchdown. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Jets are going to retake the lead. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Now the try here for the extra point. And that makes it 14-10. So that drive spanned five plays. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he'll just take a seat and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. And that's caught inside the 35. And he takes it all the way down to the 32. A big play that time for Cleveland. A lot of running backs in the passing game, they're just used to check it down to them or maybe dump off passes. But this guy, they use him to stretch the field, don't they? The stretch it right there, turned it into a really nice game. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10, just outside the 30. Running right, here's Brown. They give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. I feel like I can see what he was thinking on that carry. Want to follow that big tackle through the hole? Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They'll try to left side. Brown, and he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Just a couple of minutes, we'll get you to Orlando and our good friend Jonathan Coachman. Coach will run through some of the numbers and the next-gen stats from this first half of football so far. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he will get him down a couple yards shy of the first down marker. A nice tackle coming up from his free safety spot. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. He'll drop to throw. And it's going to be batted down. It will go the other way with the football. The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. And the Jets are going to get the football back. Now that's just simply good coaching and excellent technique on that play. You know why? Because wow. everyone wants to rush the passer when they want to throw the football, but you're not always going to get there. So what are you taught to do? When the ball's finally thrown, get your hands up in the passing lanes, and they batted that one away. No, 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 no. Throwing on first down, O'Brien. His throw incomplete. The coverage was good, but I just wonder if they absolutely fooled the quarterback on that play. I think he was expecting something else. Ended up with nowhere to throw the football successfully. Second and ten. Throwing again. O'Brien. Buying time to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Let's go. Let's go. 
Certainly making his presence felt in both the pass and the run game. He's having an impact. Yeah, his first carry of the game right there. He had hurt him with his arm. Now he's showing that he can shuffle the puppies as well. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Looking to throw, O'Brien. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Now the Jets gonna use the second of their three timeouts as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First and 10, O'Brien. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. Picked off by Anthony Walker. And the Browns are going to have great field position here as this is returned just shy of midfield. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Here comes a field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing. And I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way, and they won't settle for anything less. So right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field. Try to make sure his teammates come along with him, and he feels like if I do better, everyone will do better. And that's what we're seeing from him right now. Got to have a little extra determination. Yeah, a little extra determination. He has thrown the touchdown pass. No interceptions for him personally to this point. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Second down at five. They'll look to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Jackson. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. down and that one drops down incomplete good coverage there first the ball free and it's second down well, I think that was good strategy there trying to go right back to him after the last completion but this time the defense was all over it and they got there to break that one up here's second and ten back to throw here and that's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. He'll look underneath and finds Brown. And boy, he is very easy close work. to a it's first down, but from where again. they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. The offense here not budging. They're going to fight for it on fourth and inches. They'll look to throw again. And he's going to have his running back. It's complete. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. And that's 
that's a big pickup on the first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense, they can't get the stop here. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first, this one from 38. And his kick here is good. And the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice win for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. So not much time to work with here. Nine seconds remain in the half as this one is away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. shot before break. O'Brien going deep for Walker. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Jets on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan 